Exploring the very edges of the rules might be something every competitor considers during their armorsling career, but what happens when they take it one, or in some cases, several steps too far? Get your straps on and prepare for the ready go, as in this video, we'll take a look at some very controversial, and in some cases, downright immoral moves in armorsling. The Javelin is a move so frowned upon that utilizing it gets people up in arms before the match is even over. Its name is presumably derived from the movements being visually similar to that of a javelin thrower. While the move has some striking similarities to a press, the arm is instead pushed further forward, outside of the opponent's shoulder, putting them in a very clear arm break position. Oftentimes, this is accompanied by the elbow of the offending athlete coming off the path, something that makes its use even more flagrant. The javelin is definitely one of the more obvious moves and always has a large visceral impact on viewers. None was perhaps more immediate and obvious as the time armorsling content creator John Thompson featured in an armor super match with Kieran Morrison. And as he's running away, I just keep pushing. Now, this will likely look not so great on my part. Thompson, also known as Uncle John, received enormous backlash for his use of the move from viewers, despite his opponent being generally forgiving. Another, in my opinion, rather flagrant use of the move comes to us courtesy of Travis Bajant. He pulled the old javelin out of his bag of tricks in a match versus the notorious Michael Todd during the equally notorious, pseudo-cancelled WAL Finals of 2017. Although I think it's pretty obvious what Bajant was doing here, most of the online backlash went towards Michael Todd for his, in my opinion, pretty understandable outburst after the match. There have been others using this move, but in most cases, arm wrestlers in the public eye are smart enough to stay as far away from this one as they can, for risk of potentially ending their careers. In my opinion, the javelin is not only ethically ambiguous, but also plainly against the rules utilized by most of the bigger leagues. While the javelin might be somewhat obscure in its use, I couldn't make a video on illegal armistling moves without including the most talked about and most divisive move in recent history. Yes, I am of course talking about the King's Move. If by some chance you aren't aware of the King's Move yet, have no fear, the arm historian has got you with one of my previous videos on the topic. However, for this video, we're of course talking about when the King's Move, or an open top roll, becomes way too open. If, while performing this outside move, you suddenly find yourself staring up at the armistling table, it probably means you're now in clear violation of the rules, and should be wondering where it all went wrong for you. I'm sure this scenario has happened multiple times throughout the rather common abuse of this move. How quickly a declining humerus or shoulder below the table is called as a foul though, is heavily dependent on specific leaks, as some are way more lenient in its use. Heavy detractors of the king's move in general will point to the practitioners of the move often relying on a bone lock and it leading to some of the most ugly looking matches in armistling history. I'll let you, the merciful viewer, be the judge of that. Talking about shoulders and their positions relative to the table, another quite illegal move that is seldomly called correctly is when an athlete has their attacking shoulder crossing the center line of the table. Despite many misconceptions, this is not only illegal during the setup, but is also clearly against the rules during a match. More often than not, if called incorrectly, or in some cases not at all, it is a clear advantage for taller athletes, as it allows them to maneuver their body in a more favorable position. In some cases, this can result in an athlete crowding their opponent's side of the table. In some ways, this move could be characterized as being on the opposite end of the spectrum as the king's move. Application of the rule during tournaments or super matches therefore often leads to confusion and some amount of anger from spectators, pointing to a general lack of knowledge about the rule's very existence. Whether or not the move should even be illegal once a match has started is also a hotly debated topic amongst armrestling viewers and athletes alike.
While it's certainly true, tempers often flare up high in arm wrestling, and a lot of athletes become quite vocal and uh, riled up, let's say, during some matches. Sometimes, as is the case with most everything, some people just take it too far. If you can no longer contain your outburst to just verbal attacks directed at your opponent, you might be tempted to reach over the table and attack them physically. While sometimes done for dramatic effect and even actively encouraged by the competition or crowd, other instances seem all too genuine, like in 2006, when the Travis Bajan vs Alexei Semerenko vendetta match became briefly physical between rounds. Ah, a little embarrassing. A little embarrassing for the beach man. I, I hate it when my kids and they're always showing their buddies that photo, that video. It's terrible. Don't ever act like that. That was me lashing out at Igor Mazarenko for not giving me all my damn money. While I feel getting physically aggressive is obviously inevitable in a combat and strength sport like arm wrestling, those who take it that step too far and can't control their emotions should not be encouraged, and in most cases, luckily, aren't, as far as some of the bigger leagues go. Let your actions and strength do the talking on the table, and don't show obvious weakness by confronting your opponent physically outside the confines of the organized sport. If all of the aforementioned moves fail and you're willing to put it all on the line, you can try a different angle and put yourself in a break arm position. Technically illegal within most rule sets and leagues, but not always enforced or very clear. Putting yourself in a dangerous position is obviously inherently dangerous to your own health. It would therefore be best for people to avoid this position as often as possible, even as a last resort. No match, in my opinion at least, is worth breaking your arm. That being said, one could argue that the responsibility to keep oneself safe and to determine the limits of your own body is up to each individual athlete. Simply put, if you want to test your own frame and put yourself in dangerous positions to win an arm wrestling match, shouldn't that be your own choice? This issue on whether or not to allow athletes to put themselves in dangerous or break arm positions on the table is one not often talked about, but in my opinion, has the potential to cause a big divide within the community later down the line. I hope the point of this video will not be misconstrued as simply a voyeuristic look into the worst behaviors in the arm wrestling world, although admittedly, in part, it is. Rather, I hope to emphasize the importance of clear-cut rules. Not only would more well-defined rules be beneficial for the sport within an organization or league, but a unified rule set between those different leagues could give the sport more uniformity and, in my opinion, a more positive outward image. A lot of the actions mentioned in this video could be avoided by a strict appliance of clear rules across the board. More strict enforcement might also act as a preemptive deterrence in some cases. Does this mean I want the rules themselves to be altered to be less lenient? Of course not. I know a draconian approach or even a WAF approach to the rule set does not work for every league. And nor should it. At the risk of sounding too sanctimonious though, I do think we can all agree that some of the most outrageous examples we saw here today should no longer be tolerated by us as a community. Thank you for watching this video of the Arm Historian, I hope you enjoy it. Also check me out and possibly give me a follow on some of my other social media. I upload some exclusive content that isn't seen on this channel on Instagram, Facebook and yes, even TikTok. As always a major shout out to all the armies and finger folk and until next time, Arm Historian, out.